dancing into their victory tonight. Someone is dancing into their breakthrough tonight. Somebody is dancing into their miracle tonight. Just want you. Just want you. Just want you. Lord, we 
just want you, we just want you. Just want you, just want Nobody you. else will do it. Nobody else will yeah. I just want you, I just want you. Just want you, just Lord, I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, just This mountain will not move without you. Situation will not shift without you, Lord. Just want you, just My body will not be healed without you, Lord. Just want you, just Nobody else will do. Somebody, is that your desire? Say, God, I just want you. I just want you. I just want you, just Lord, I just want you right here, right now. Just want you right here, right now, just Lord. Want you, just Nobody want else you. will do. Nobody else. One more time, will say, do. Lord, I just want you. I just want you. Just want you. Just they that come upon you shall be saved. Just want you. Just they that come upon you shall be saved. Just want you. Just want you. Nobody else will do. Ba 
you are the only Lord in this place, Lord. You are the only King in this place, Lord. You are in control. You are in charge. In advance, we thank you, Lord, for what we're going to receive here, what you have already released, Lord. We are grateful for what you have already released here tonight. We thank you, Father, as you stir us up to your purpose. To the glory of the name of Jesus. Pare moshida. Indra mi pamashida hida ba pamashida. Wetre mi pamashte kayaba. Mandra mi pamashida. Oh, shida harida tamashida. Wetre mi pamashida hida ba pamashida. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Let's just go ahead and just appreciate the Lord as we release that joyful noise in the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 We stand in the position of trust. Hallelujah. Wow, there's peace in trust. <laughs> Hallelujah. I went back to look at the meaning of my name last night, just to check. <laughs> and I've checked before, as I said, we have taught before, should I say 13 years, 11 to 10 years we have taught about this. Um, uh, when I grew up, I knew that my name meant the protector of the home. However, the, 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 the internet has a slightly different meaning. I think since I was saved, so the internet changed to fit into my <laughs> path. It says, you know, peaceful warrior. Yeah. Hallelujah. And again, it says, giant peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we are so grateful for the Lord tonight and for the lives that the Lord is changing. The Lord is shifting you to another level. Don't dare go back to where you were before. You can only go higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. The word that's released here. According to Isaiah 55, 11, it's still here. Amen. This word will stay here until that purpose is accomplished. Amen. So when the purpose is accomplished, the word will say mission accomplished. And then go back to the Father. Amen. The word has been released. It will continue to transform our lives. Amen. When the word is released... It indeed will not go back until the purpose is accomplished. Yes. When I was doing metric, I heard the word. It was probably around September. It was before exams in a religious instruction class. I heard that word. The man was jokingly but very strong, ministering the word with simplicity. And he shared that word. The same week, I went to the um, uh, SEM. For whatever reason, the same man was preaching again. And he was preaching the same message. And he said, those that want to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior must lift up their hands. 
I mean, I, I was not born again, so I tried. My hand was so heavy, it couldn't go up. <laughs> but that word never left me. <laughs> it kept working. A, a month went by, another one. On the third month, the word was still working. And I had to take at that moment, surrender my life to Christ Jesus. Because the word will always work if we allow it. Hallelujah. So when the word is being released here tonight, be willing to receive that word. Be willing to embrace that word. Let that word work upon your life. Hallelujah. If you are visiting with us here tonight and this is your very first time, can you just wave wherever you are? You have never been to this place before. I see a hand there. There's another hand this side. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. We are Ignite House Ministries International. And this is our conference, Search for Increase, with uh, Bishop Prophet Dr. Chiza, releasing the mysteries of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you're welcome. Um, um, uh, uh, this can be your home, actually, if you desire. If you have no place to fellowship, this can be your home. And God bless you and increase your abundantly tonight. Whatever your needs are, we know that God is able to meet your needs. Hallelujah. He is well able to meet all those needs. So the conference started already um, um, uh, more than 24 hours ago. And if, you, if this is your first time for the past 24 hours we are here, and if this is your first time in this conference tonight, can we just wave? Wow, I see several hands. Keep them up. Keep them up. We want to appreciate you. Receive our love. Just keep your hands up, though. Keep your hands up. We don't need to say hands up, you know, so just need to keep them up. Just keep those hands up. So, and just tell your neighbor where you were last night. Where have you been when we were enjoying in the presence of God? We're really enjoying in the presence of God. And so just be ready to receive here tonight. The, we continue with the conference tomorrow as well. And um, uh, our, our, our time schedule still should be half past five. Uh, uh, tomorrow we should start exactly at half past five. Nobody's going to work. <laughs> no, no, it's now half past five. <laughs> um, but we, 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 we want to start on time tomorrow. So we should be here before half past five. Um, maybe we should, we should, we should say from five o'clock, but we should be here half past four for five. Um, when it's half past, when it's five o'clock, we are hitting the road. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to waste any more time. I want us to take this wonderful time as we receive and just a reminder, the swiping machine is available. Uh, for, for tonight, it was not working last night, so tonight is working. So, church, um, fivefold ministers are gifts to the body of Jesus. Some are gifts to five people. Some are gifts to ten. Some are gifts to fifty. Some are gifts to the whole city. Some are gifts to the whole world. Hallelujah. May we take this wonderful time to receive a gift that God has given to the whole world. Bishop, Prophet, Chiza.
Hallelujah. Amen. Are you all right tonight? Amen. Are you okay? Amen. Can you ask someone next to say, Are you okay? Are you all right? <laughs> you may be seated, praise and worship. Uh, thank you so much. I want you to greet someone. I, yesterday I said, Praise and worship. You may be seated. I, I just want you to greet about seven people. I want you to prophesy and say, I am not a grasshopper. I don't eat leaves. I eat grapes. Say, I am not. Say, I'm not a grasshopper. <laughs> say, I eat grapes. Tell them, tell them, tell them. <laughs> say, I eat grapes. Greet someone. Hallelujah. We may be seated. God bless you. I want to salute Apostle Humphrey and Prophetess. Uh, we love you so much and we are praying for you. Uh, we fell in love with them from the first day we saw this wonderful couple. Hallelujah. And uh, my wife has been talking about them uh, in Bulawayo there. So we invited them for our annual Breakthrough Power Conference, which is going to be happening in Bulawayo. It's one of our mega conferences. So they are coming end of September. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate that? Let's celebrate that they are coming. And I hope they don't come alone. That some people from here are also going to escort them to Bulawayo, to Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. Uh, so it's the last week, the last week of September. I think it must be from 28 to the 1st of October, something like that. So that's when they are coming. And Bulawayo is waiting for them. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I am a blessed man. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, when we welcome visitors, we welcome them in a presidential manner. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you must come and see some things in Blawayo there. Amen. You will not think you are in Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's go to the word of God in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I am talking about a title, The Revelations of the Miracle at the Pool of Bethesda. The Revelations at the Miracle Pool of Bethesda. Or the miracle that happened at the pool of Bethesda. I will read from John chapter 5. I will read up to uh, verse 11. Verse 1 says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool, let's all shout a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda. In other versions, it's Beth Zatha, which means Beth in Hebrew is the word for a house. It's called Beth, Beth El, the house of God. Beth is the, the house of grace. So it's the pool uh, called Bethesda in Hebrew, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people or important people, blind, the lame, the withered or the paralyzed, waiting 
for the moving of the water. They will be waiting for what? Can we shout aloud? They will be waiting for the? For the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and troubled or steered up the waters. Then whoever stepped in first after the steering or troubling of the water was made well of whatever, not of some, but whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. Then Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition for a long time. And he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and he took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath day. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them and said, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know that it was Jesus. For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus. Oh, can we shout, it was Jesus. Shout aloud, it was Jesus. It was Jesus who had made him well. Now let's read Nehemiah chapter 3. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 3. Nehemiah chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. Nehemiah 3, verse 1 to 3. Then Elishab, or Elishib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the tower of the hundred, and consecrated it. Then as far as the tower of Hananel, next to Elishib, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zakua, the son of Imri, built. Verse 3. Also the sons of Hasena, they built the fish gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. May the Lord our God bless the reading of his word today. May we all shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now the Bible is saying by the sheep gate, because um, we are being told here of a feast of the Jews that was happening in Jerusalem. And Jesus went there to Jerusalem. Uh, and in his mind and in his spirit as God, he was seeing a man 
that was in a condition for 38 years, waiting for the moving of the water. So it touched heaven and God did to make sure that Jesus go through the gate, the sheep gate, which is by the pool, to go and heal and touch that man who was waiting for a very long time. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me that there are people that I'm going to touch in this place today who have got conditions, you have got situations and circumstances that you have been praying for for a long time and they have not been moving. I have come with good news that Jesus is passing by today. Oh, can I hear an amen? Can I hear a yes? Can you shout, I am receiving my miracle? Now today, even if you have a sickness that was defying medicine, it's going to go. It's going to move away from your body. It's going to come out. Can somebody stand up and shout, I receive my miracle? I receive my miracle. If you believe it, can you stand up, shout, I receive, my I receive my miracle? Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah. We may be seated. All right, before I come to the area where we are going to be praying for people, deliverance, and prophesying, I just want to give you some, 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 some notes. We just want uh, to, to get into the word uh, in a deeper manner so that we explain some stuff then because we don't just start doing deliverance without the word. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible is saying, by the ship gate, there is a pool. Now, I want you to understand something. The city of Jerusalem, or the walls of Jerusalem, they have eight gates that are there. Now, gates in the spiritual realm, that's why the Bible says, let the gates of God remain open in Psalms. The gates of the Spirit, they represent uh, passageways. To certain spiritual realms or heavenly realms. So whenever you see the word gate in the Bible, it is talking for passageways to certain spiritual dimensions or realms or heavenly places. So doors or gates in the spirit, they control spiritual traffic in and out. A door it is a border of what is outside and what is inside. So you cannot access what is inside a building without passing through a gate. So you must understand that in the spiritual realm, there are gates. So the eight gates of Jerusalem, which you find in Nehemiah chapter 3, they talk of certain spiritual passageways to certain spiritual realms. So for you to partake or to explore or to enjoy certain things in the spiritual realm, you must have the knowledge of which gate to use. You must have the understanding, you must have the principles and the keys of gates. So you must know which gate leads me maybe to the room where there is healing. To the room where there is miracle or to the room where, where there is money. So that's why Jesus said, in my father's house, there are mansions, mansions. There are many rooms. So there are doors, there are gates that leads you into those rooms. So as a child of God, you have to know which gate leads you to where. So I, I will just speak, maybe before we continue, about three gates that I just want to talk about. I'm not going to talk about um, the gate number four, which is important, because so far, when I think some who have gone to Israel by the Kidron Valley, uh, there is a, a golden gate, it's closed. That one, it is only going to be opened when the Messiah comes. So it is closed right now. It's only Jesus who is going to open it. But the other seven gates are open in the spirit. So there is a gate called the Sheep Gate. Now that gate leads you to a pool. The moment, the moment you get through the Sheep Gate, there is a pool that is there. And that is the only pool 
where there would be an angel that would come at a certain time and trouble the waters. Whosoever was the first to step in was healed of whatsoever disease he had. Now the ship gate was the first gate which Nehemiah was told to construct when he was coming from Babylon in Nehemiah chapter 3. Why? Because the ship gate is the gate that represents sonship. Can we all say sonship? So it is the, so if you want miracles, if you want angelic activity to happen in your life, if you want breakthroughs, you must know how to build, how to construct the ship gate. You must know how to put the bolts, the doors, and everything, the bars that are needed. So you need to specialize to be a specialist son for you to operate on that gate. So I, I always tell people, because I am under a father, that I am a specialist son, and I operate on the ship gate. That is where I operate. And when you are operating on that gate, there is always heaven visitations. There is angelic visitants. There are mind-blowing miracles, breakthroughs that begins to happen in your life when you are stationed in your life as a son by that gate. So, so the sons of Elisheb and the brethren, they are the ones who constructed that gate. Now these were sons of the priest, of the high priest and their brethren because they were children under a man of God. And um, they had to construct that gate before all other gates. Why? Because it's the most important gate. Now I want to, to show you something. I, I want you to open your Bible in the book of Matthew 25, if you have your Bible. Open Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 32. It says that at the end of the day, or at the end uh, of the hour, which is the, the, the time of the latter days, the coming of Jesus Christ, Certain things are going to happen, but I want to touch verse 32, which says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit down on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate them one from the other. As a sheep divides, as, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the gods, and he will set the sheep on the right hand side, but the gods he will put them on the left hand side. Then you, the the sheep, which are the people that were living a life of sonship are the ones that are going to enter heaven, but the gods are going to be taken into hell. So in every church, listen, there are two types of Christians. There is the sheep and the gods. Can you look at someone next to you? Does they, do they look like sheep or they look like gods? Hallelujah. So, so those are two characters that you find in the body of Christ. Now, a god is a rebellious animal. Very stubborn and very, very disobedient. It doesn't listen to instructions, but a sheep obeys its shepherd. Do I have some people that are obedient in this place? To their spiritual father, hallelujah. So sheep is known by submission because sheep knows the voice of the master, the voice of the shepherd, and the Bible says they follow the voice of the shepherd, and they are submissive, they are loyal, they are faithful, they are, they are humble, they don't fight. Sheep, sheep is peaceful. I, I heard someone, a, a, a scientist, who was saying that they discovered that all people uh, who grew up in the villages, who were taking care of gods, are very dull in class. Why? Because that animal makes you not to think straight. 
it, it, it twists your brains or something because it is very stubborn. It's not easy. So if you want your child to be very dull in school, it's simple. Just make them to keep, to keep gods. They will not see anything in the classroom. Hallelujah. So uh, the Bible is saying God is going to separate gods from sheep. The sheep will be put on the right side. The gods, they will be put on the left side. So we, you, you have got in churches, people that give their pastor a hard time. Now, when you are shepherding gods, when you are, you are keeping gods, you, you are in, in for a treat. It's not easy. If you try to beat them to go in this direction, they go the other direction. And they are always bleeding for no reason. Meh, meh, meh. You know, those Christians who are always complaining, criticizing their pastor for no reason. So, so I'm seeing some people here, but you don't look like gods. You are looking like sheep. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you shake someone next to say, you know, you don't look like a god. You are looking like sheep. <laughs> Do you know the gods? The gods are those who love gossip in the church. Those who love to criticize the men of God. So now the Bible is saying when you enter through the sheep gate, you go to a pool of miracles. So I noticed when you are a son in the house, there are miracles that happens in your life. Powerful miracles. There are angelic visitations. I remember one time I took all the pastors in our church and I told them that if we want to prosper as sons in this church, we must learn how to operate on the ship gate. We must be sons in the house. And I started leading by example our archbishop, who is my spiritual father, who raised me, uh, Archbishop Asa Gurupira. So he is the father that raised me since I was a young boy. There was one day with my wife, we just decided that... We, we want to be sheep on the altar for our father. We want him to always, at any time, raise a knife over us and demand stuff. You remember Abraham, when he wanted, Isaac was a sheep. He put Isaac on the altar. Isaac was now an adult. He was now uh, a, a boy at an age where he could have fought his father. And he could even had wrestled his father, and, and he could have uh, ran away from being put on the altar, but he was submissive. And the father lifted a knife to sacrifice him, and he was loyal. He was faithful, he was ready to be sacrificed. And then they, they saw a ram, a sheep that was caught in the thicket, and uh, that's where the name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, come from. And they took, and an angel said, stop, don't kill your son. I have seen even your faithfulness. But I also got a revelation of the faithfulness of Isaac. Because that miracle could not have happened if Isaac was not a son. So it's not written in the Bible, but I'm looking it the other way around. That if Isaac had fought his father, that miracle could not be recorded in the Bible. But he was humble. He was willing to be sacrificed by his father. So I said, I want my father to sacrifice me uh, at any time, whatever he wants. If he phones, we will give. So I remember after we prayed that prayer, we, we, we were still poor that time, very, very poor. We said, Lord, we want to be prosperous. We want to make it in life. You know, I think some who were not there yesterday, I spoke some testimonies. I was telling uh, uh, Mr. Mushudu that, do you know that I had one jacket, one maroon jacket? You know, those pastors, when you just see a piece, a corner, before you see the whole body, you know that Papa is come. Your father, your man of God, has arrived. Hallelujah. So they, they knew my jacket, one jacket for years. One maroon jacket. I even posted it at a certain time on Facebook. That was the jacket which they knew in my church, that this is our father. 
Because we had no food. We, when we went to Blawayo, we had to pray. Because I was coming from Harare, I was sent by my father. And the Lord said, go and start a church in Blawayo. When we arrived, no food, no nothing. No house. It's a war veteran who took care of us, who later chucked us out. And we were staying in a house with my wife, without, which was half-roofed. You know, when it's wind and it's July time, dust would come inside. And we were trying to do the work of God. Whilst we were there, submissive to the sending of the fathers. So we said, Lord, remove us from this situation. We pray that you may take us to another level. And the Lord said, do you want me to prosper you and to give you money? I said, yes. And the Lord gave me this revelation that I want you to be a sheep to your father. I want you to construct the sheep gate. I want you to be a son. When you are a son, you are going to prosper. And you are going to be the one that I'm going to use to help to finance your father's church. Whether it's a building, you'll be the top giver. So we made a covenant with the Lord that day. And we said, we want to be prosperous. We want to be blessed. Because I remember we, we, we were shown a tree by God when we went to Blawayo, a mulberry tree by our house. Because we had no food and God said, anoint this tree with oil. We anointed it. So every morning, it will be having ripen mulberries and we'll pick them, put them in a dish with my wife and we eat and we drink water and we sleep. That was our food. And another okra tree that was somewhere there, which we also prayed for. So now what started happening every morning, there will be ripen mulberries and we would even invite people, neighbors, they would come pick and we would remove and make sure we, we take all the ripen mulberries. But to our surprise, the next morning, there will be new ripen ones on the tree. And we would take them and eat them. So this was the life which we were living in Bulawayo. So some people now who now write um, articles that Chisa is like this, they don't know where we come from, especially in Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. When they are now seeing us, now prospering, they don't know where we are coming from. It was not an easy road, but we decided to be sons. When you are a son, God blesses you with miracles. Can you shake someone? Say, do you want mind-blowing testimonies? Ask them, say, do you want mind-blowing testimonies? Say, be a son. Shake them and say, be a son. Do, do you know what? Now, God started blessing us. There was an anointing that just God put upon my life. Wherever, now the Lord said, I now want you to have money. So I started seeing people just starting to send us money from all over the world, some that I don't even know. And we started funding our father. I remember one time we, we said we are going to surprise our father uh, and take him uh, to a place that he has never been. And the Lord gave me a revelation. Uh, I wrote some principles in this book called The Blessing of the Lord. So God gave me Genesis, I just want to show you something. I, I think it's important, some things that I just want to say here before I pray for people. Open Genesis 27. Genesis 27, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son, and he answered him, here I am. And then he said, behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, your bow, and go out into the field and hunt game and make me so very food, such as I love. Everyone shout, such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now, the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation. And he said, a father or a pastor that is pastoring you 
can bless you in two dimensions. Pastors, they bless one, they bless you, the first one, through the physical realm or the physical dimension where you are just hearing the voice of the father. It's the first level of being blessed by a father. But that one does not release the blessing. You get some things, but not the blessing. The blessing comes when the soul of your spiritual father blesses you. Amen. Some of you in this church, you have not yet or never been blessed by the soul of your past. Now that is deep. Because a soul, it is the, where the emotions, where the passion, where, where all the feelings of a man are. The mind of a man is there. So when the soul blesses you, sometimes you see your, your, your father or your pastor shedding tears. So if you have never seen the tears of this man, you haven't, seen a, you haven't received a prayer from his soul. And the Lord, I asked God, so how do you do that? How do you make your father's soul to bless you? And the Lord said, you have to ask what he loves or likes. Then you buy that. Not what you think he likes, but what he likes. Because now, uh, so when you do that, I will bless you. So uh, at first we went to our father and said, what do you want? And he said, I want a dining table. And I went into a shop. He said, go to a shop and send me photos. So I sent photos, the first one of a cheap one. And he said, send other photos. <laughs> I sent another one and I said, no, can you send? Because there was an expensive one. I was avoiding that one. When I sent it, he said, yes, I want that one. <laughs> that is the one I love. Brethren, I forked out a lot of money. It was not easy. I went there, and my father is still using it up to now. He blessed me, and I saw tears coming on his eyes. And then we, the Holy Spirit said, no, you haven't started. I now want to lift you up. Then I, I went, and I said, which holiday destination would you want to go? And my father said, with my, with my wife, my son, we desire to go to Fiji in the Oceanias beyond Australia there. And with my wife, we raised that money, bought him a business class ticket with his wife to fly all the way to the Oceanias beyond Australia. Because they had to go through Australia, brethren, it was a painful moment of raising such a money to send your father to Fiji. So, but I was sensing that there is something of a God that is being broken. And God is making me to construct that ship gate. So after that happened, the whole, and they went for holiday. With my wife, we decided also to go to holiday. That's when my life changed. That's when I saw that it's powerful to operate on the ship gate. We booked a plan from Zimbabwe business class, we were supposed to go to Vietnam in, in business class. And we arrived at Oaratambo here. And to my surprise, I heard my name being called for first class, yet we had booked what? Business. So we, we went into the plan. I decided, no, I'm not going through first class. I'm going through business because my ticket was written business class. So we went into the plan. And we, we were flying with the Virgin Atlantic Air, that one which is like an Airbus with a double deck. And we, so I saw a person who, who was waiting for us. So she said, oh, you are Mr. Chisa. We were waiting for you. You are flying in first class. I said, no, we booked business class. Check our ticket. We started to argue. She said, no, you booked first class. So there was an argument there until they were almost closing their door. I said, the plane is about to take off. Mr. Chisa, please just go to first class. Please, we don't want to. Do. So with my wife, we are wondering. And we are being taken you know, into the first class, into these rooms. 
And then I didn't know that in first class when you arrive, all the pilots, they come out to salute you. And it's our first time to see that. And the pilots are coming out. How are you, Mr. Chisa? I said, yes, hallelujah. Because we are surprised. And he said, welcome to first class. This is your room. Your wife is using this room. So we knew the price of a first class ticket that one person is around 300,000 rands per person to go where we were supposed to go. So which means this is almost half a million. And us, we never paid for that. And we are flying all the way. And then we didn't know that there is a butler that comes that from, from on this flight, I'm your personal butler. Trouble me. Everything you want. Any menu. And I'm getting inside. I'm surprised. Is it me who is here? You know, you start to explore all the things that are there, the bed I'm seeing. Huh? Then to my surprise, I saw Eddie Branson, the CEO, because I used to see presidents in first class. The CEO was also flying with us. He was in the first class. I said, this is Eddie Branson, the owner of Virgin Atlantic. I know him. And he even greeted us. So I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm flying with the president. So I said, now I have someone to copy everything he's doing, I will be doing. <laughs> so I saw him also removing his jacket, and they, you are given pajamas. And I also removed mine and said, give me pajamas. And you are given morning shoes. I also got, I was checking everything he was doing. I was also commanding them. Because it was my first time to be in first class. So sometimes you just copy in a way, you know, you know, copying. <laughs> if you, you must not be seen. So they thought, I know, because I was, but I was copying everything he was doing. If he, so when he went to shower, I also later followed and showered as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, are, we enjoyed for free first class. Now we went to and fro Vietnam first class. Next time again, we are traveling with Qatar. The same miracle happened. We booked business, and there was, they were saying, you are in first class. Second time, I, because at first I thought it was an accident or an, an incident that just happened coincidentally. But and now I'm seeing that, no, it's now a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord said, when you upgrade your father, I will also upgrade you. When you upgrade your men of God, I will also upgrade you. So from that moment, I started noticing something. That uh, whenever our father, even right now when we came, he called, my wife called me when I was at the hotel here uh, where we are staying. That our spiritual father just called, said, we are pouring at the HQ. We are pouring the deck. So he wants 50,000 runs. Uh, from us. I, I don't argue with my wife. I said, did you give him? Just why? Because we are now blessed. Hallelujah. Just why? This is a pastor who was struggling. In 2011, we were struggling to pay rent of 500 rands. Our building, small building where we were containing about maybe 50 people or so, we were failing to pay 500 rands. I remember they would take chairs and say, you must pay. Pastor Chisa, Prophet Chisa, you must pay. And we are taking chairs. We would do church while people are sitting on the floor. In 2011, recently, but now, we now have a 10,000 sitter church built fully finished by the grace of God because of the spirit of sonship. Can, we, can you shout sonship? sonship. Shout aloud sonship. Shout, sonship. sonship. Say, I'm going to be a sheep. I'm going to be a son in the house. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I even gathered uh, the whole church. Now I was now understanding. I said, we want to buy our father a car. And we are buying him a bulletproof Mercedes Benz. Hallelujah. With bulletproof windows. And people were looking at me with eyes like, what are you talking about? 
I said, we are going to do that. So we, I spearheaded the fundraising. And we bought an S-class. Hallelujah. Bulletproof, presidential. With the, all the kids and everything. That one, when you shoot on the window ten times, you can, at the same place, you will not break the window. With everything, airbags, you know, those cars where you enjoy the accident. <laughs> Even when you are in it, you enjoy the accident because you will be cushioned everywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we presented it before our father. Apostle Mligwe from Limpopo was there, Dr. Mligwe. He came, he was surprised, checking everything. He is the one even who started, I had to show him how to start that car. Which is, because there are some cars, you know, which needs also fingerprint. Click, 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 and you record, and uh, then you start the car. And we are releasing it to our father. And I was the son leading that project. Now, when such things are happening, don't be among those that are criticizing. Don't be among those that are fighting. So we did that for our father. He cried. He blessed the church. Our church had poor pastors. During a conference like this of pastors, there would be three cars outside. The, past, the archbishop's car and the two guys that we knew who were managers. All of us, we were using what we call in Zimbabwe, we have got a football organization called ZIFA, which is Zimbabwe Football Association. But I, call, I, I called my pastor, I said, you are all in ZIFA, it's Zimbabwe Footing Association. <laughs> Zimbabwe Footing Association, we were in ZIFA, all of us. We were footing to church, no cars. But after that, God started blessing all the pastors with cars. After, so Dr. Muligwe came last year, he was surprised to see almost every pastor had a beautiful car. And something is now happening in Zimbabwe. In our ministry, we are no longer poor as before. Why? Because we understood the power of constructing the ship gate. And I taught them how to do it. That we need to give to our father. We need to bless our father. And now we do an appreciation every end of the year. Last year we gave him around 60,000 US dollars. Uh, some surprised him with many things. We send him to holiday for holiday so that they relax even for two weeks or so. Uh, and this year we are planning even a big surprise. And we, we are taking him somewhere far away he has never been before because we want him to shed tears so that his soul bless us. His soul must bless us. Another time we, we said, which other destination do you want? He said, my wife dreams of going to Mauritius. We send him to Mauritius. Uh, and he came and blessed my church, and he said, let there be weddings. I was in trouble, brethren. <laughs> Girls were being married. From that day, that's when I received the anointing in our church. Even if you are 60 years, you get married. 60 years old, 55, 54. I would conduct Apostle Humphrey weddings three times a week. Week after week, girls were being married every Saturday. I, my elders are here. They know what I'm talking about. Every, every Saturday, three or so elders will be announcing, so-and-so has been lobolad. So-and-so, can you stand in front? Until girls started coming to our church because there was rumors in Blawai, if you want a husband, if you want to be married, go to Jesus' church. There you get married. I am wedding people, ladies who are 52 years old, 40 something years old, who have never been married. In our church, there is no issue of number. So when I'm blessing you, even when you are 60 years old, you have to tell me, please don't release that one of marriage. Because if I release it, you'll be married at 65. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have to say, maybe release it to my son. 
release it to my children. Why? Because of supporting a father. When you stand with this man of God, when you bless this man of God and his wife, I am telling you the truth, you will be blessed beyond measure. Oh, can we clap our hands unto God? There is power in supporting your father. When he is being blessed, if you, are, if you are an elder or a deacon, you must support that. Don't fight those things because you are fighting your own blessing. You are shooting yourself into your own foot. So I noticed these miracles started happening in our church and God started blessing pastors, blessing us uh, in our, and we were blessed so much. I remember another time we did something and he blessed us. That's how I got the land. After I came from Harare, I just wanted to have a land to build a church. So I went to city council, told them I want a land big like this. Uh, where I can put a 10,000 seater for children and a 60,000 seater for adults. And they said, what are you talking about? All pastors who fight us in Blawayo saying, why, can, why do you give one pastor such a land? They said, we advise you to buy. We can't give such a land like that. So I went to pray and the Lord said, I have taken you to a level because of the way you bless your father. Where whatever you ask, I will not refuse. I will give you all the desires of your heart. Because there is one day when I blessed my father, he just said, may God give you all the desires of your heart. And he left and he went into his bedroom. And I knew I now had a powerful blessing upon my life. So I, I, I just had a dream one day. And the Lord showed me a certain deacon. And then um, I prayed and his face continued coming. I, that deacon apostle who came uh, to greet me at the hotel yesterday. Is it today or yesterday? I'm no longer remembering. I think you saw him. He's the one I saw in a vision. I called him. I said, you, you carry the land of our church. He said, me? I said, go around. Look for a place. Because I saw your face. You are linked to a man who shall bless us with, who shall sell us a land to build this vision. And he went, got a friend, then they came, connected me to a certain Jewish family. They said, we are selling a warehouse for 3,000. I said, no, I don't want a warehouse. I want land. So they said, put your application letter, just leave it with your three Ds because I had everything in place. And little did I know that the following year was the year of Jubilee. After 50 years, the Jewish people, they release land for free to a Gentile. And my application letter is in that family. Then the, the family came from Israel. You know, those old men with the long white beard. They came at a meeting and they said, in Zimbabwe and Blawayo here, we want to bless one Gentile, one person who is non-Jewish. The son said, no, there is a prophet who came with an application letter here. He wants a big land. So he brought it. They looked at it and said, this is a good one. We love prophets in Israel. We are, we are Israelites. Prophets are good people. I, we just love prophets. So he said, and I sense even this prophet, he has a vision because I had put everything, the hospital that we want. So they were excited about my vision. I was called and I, I thought they are going to charge me big monies. I was told there is a transaction of a land. When I arrived, they said, are you prophet Shiza? It was one man with a white beard, an old man, a Jewish man. He said, do you know that um, as a family, we have decided that we give you uh, the land which our father, the first mayor of Blawayo owned. We are giving you for free. Go and have a look if you want it. And uh, then you come and offer. Because it's a big land, you offer whatever you want to pay. It's for free, but you offer what you want to pay. We will give you at that, but it's big. So I went, I didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't know there is a land like that in Blawayo. And for sure, it was 110,000 square meters. 
just at the periphery of town, our place which we have now, it is about 11 hectares. It's like a little farm in Blawai, which I didn't know. And I went with the evaluators. They said, this land in runs, it is worth about 60 million or 70 million runs at the moment. So, uh, Prophet, at least offer 10 million runs. I said, I don't have that type of money. They told me, offer what you want. Me, I'm going to offer <laughs> what I want. <laughs> so that time I offered it in rents, I think it was 2 million rents that time. From 60, 70 million, I went and said, in 12 months to pay, we will pay you. And they said, it's okay. Uh, let's have accountants, let's have lawyers and sign. And you give us. For, from now on, we are signing everything. If you want title deeds, we are going to give you. Just start to apply. It's now your land. You can do whatever you want. And the papers were signed there and there. With zero deposit. Imagine, brethren. And we have built a 10,000 seater. Now the 10,000 seater, it is for children. We are planning to build the next 50,000 seater starting next year which is like a stadium, which we in Zimbabwe. So we are believing if God helped us to do it, we can still do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a man who said, if he did it, we can did it again. <laughs> we can do it again. Hallelujah. So we want to praise the name of the Lord for sonship. Clap hands for sonship. Sonship is powerful. I can give you testimony after testimony. Now, God is blessed. Now, now, after the ship get, you go to a pool, and in this pool, there are miracles that happen there. You get grace of miracles that comes at a certain time, angelic miracles. And then the Bible says in Nehemiah 3, they, they constructed, after constructing the ship gate, they constructed the fish gate. Let's all shout fish gate. Now when you become a son, God does not make you only to possess the ship gate, but you also begin to possess the fishing rights in the spirit. Now that gate is very powerful, the ship gate. The Bible says it was built by sons of Hasena. Hasena is a Palestinian name, uh, which is Sena, which means a, a cursed family that is poor, that is a thorny life, a life of poverty, a hard, rough life. So they chose a family that was the poorest of all the families of Israel, called the family of Hasena, that you are the ones who must construct Nehemiah 3, verse 3, the sheep gate, the, the fish gate. Because now, the, I want you to understand something. Many Christians are operating in the kingdom without fishing rights. So that gate, it is the one that gives you access to fish. Fish is symbolic to blessings. It's symbolic to money, to prosperity in the spiritual realm. That's why the first blessing that God gave to the children of God in the book of Genesis 1.28 was the ability to dominate the fish of the sea. He said, Adam and Eve, I am blessing you to dominate the fish of the sea which is the, the, the dabok. So that's why when you go on Jewish people's houses, on their gates, you see pictures of fish swimming upstream and downstream. Even my gate of my house, which I built, I put fish on the gate, representing uh, the, the, the anointing of fishing rights. Now, I, now fish, now you cannot prosper. Listen, people of God, financially or materially without knowledge on how to dominate these two gates, the sheep gate and the fish gate. So the sheep gate gives you access to go to the fishing gate where you now have what are called fishing rights. 
Where money just comes to you without manners. Can you shake someone next to say, do you know that money can come without manners? <laughs> it will just flow without manners into your life. When you now have the fish get. Now, now I want you to see something. God is blessing them with the fishing blessing. The dabok, which is the blessing which every Christian must have. Then when they went to Egypt, Pharaoh was controlling the fishing rights of the children of God. He, he was the one oppressing them. And he was even using fish to oppress the children of God. The world, the Pharaohitic systems are using money to control Christians. Fish is being used to control how we sp where we spend our time. Do you know that if you are employed, if you are working for someone, you, are, you, you don't own fishing rights. Yeah. It's your employer that owns fishing rights. They tell you when you are supposed to take an off or not. They will tell you when to come to, church, to, to work. You, you can be told, here, yeah, you work on Sunday. Yeah. And you know Sunday is the day to come to church. So you have nothing to do, you have, no, you have no rights, you have nothing to say because you don't have the fishing rights. So we are being controlled as the world by, by, by these billionaires. So we need also Christian billionaires to rise so that they conquer all these things, diseases, which they are releasing, looking us down, doing so many things. Why? Because the body of Christ lacks fishing rights. So there must be a wealthy transfer, a transfer of fishing rights. So God said, Moses, the first curse or the first plague that I want you to release on Egypt, I want you to go and stretch your rod over the river Nile and kill all the fish. Because God was transferring the fishing rights from Pharaoh to the children of God. And all the fish in the river Nile died. When Pharaoh came in the morning because he used to worship the god of Nile, the god that gives fish, it was blood all over. And if you check after that, that's when there was now movement that started happening towards going out of Egypt. And when the children of God, listen, were in the wilderness, Whenever they would want to return, do you know what would make them want to return? The Bible says they would say, we remember the fish that we used to eat in Egypt. But the reason why they couldn't go back is when they were trying to go back, they would remember that, oh, God killed all the fish. There is no more fish. So they had to go. So the reason why most of us, even when we are going and we are prospering and we, we are moving towards the things of God, when we remember that we don't have money, the moment you remember that you are broke, the moment you remember that you have not paid your rent, you are affected. And some people, they backslide because of those things. So that's why the devil doesn't want issues of money to be taught in the church. Do you know why? Because once you are taught how to give, fishing rights are released to you. Because fishing rights, they come by tithing, they come by giving, they come by, by releasing money, then God blesses you. So that's why the devil will allow us pastors to preach about love, to preach about everything. But once you touch the area of money, the devil becomes angry and he starts to fight. That now it's now prosperity gospel. And it's labeled. And who is labeling it? It's the heathens on social media are teaching us how to run churches. We are being taught by journalists, satanical, satanic journalists on social media that no, you can't tithe. These pastors are eating your money. What, 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 what? And they attack that area. Because the devil knows that as Christians, if we are bound in our fishing rights, we cannot have a nice building. We will worship in buildings that are limited. Because we, we are supposed to build churches that we want, churches with aircon, churches with nice seats, 
churches with, with the chairs behind where they are swiping machines. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like at Joseph Prince, I saw when it's now offering time, everyone is behind this. Wiring money. I said, no, I want this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not for you, where can I go? Is there a bank nearby? And what, what? And sometimes there is no network and so forth. So as children, and I can't swipe my money, and we are limited because we don't have the fishing rights. Jesus, when he came, he came to restore the fishing rights of the church. He was made poor so that we may be rich. So I always tell people that, brethren, I have got fishing rights. And for sure, I am given money in strangest places. And, and some, even in England, where there are the stingiest whites, <laughs> who can't give you a cent or a dollar. I remember I preached to a certain church and they didn't really have money. I had to fly myself. When I was on the airport, God said, I'm paying you. And a certain couple came and they said, oh, you look like a man of God. We just want to bless you. I was given 1,000 pounds. I said, thank you. They were watching those pastors. When I was about to enter, another couple came. They also, and it was white, British. By the time I sat down, I had roughly 2.5 to 3,000 pounds in my pocket. Because inside, I was blessed by another couple. So people give me money wherever I go. If you are not careful, even here, you will give me money. Because <laughs> everywhere, including Japan. I, 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 Apostle, when, when we go out with my wife, I don't carry shopping money. My sons, they know, even Andrews, I came with him, elder, this elder. I was saying, he saw when I arrived at Oaratambo, the money that I was blessed. People were just running. And I was given money. I said, my son, so that when I'm teaching, you will nod your head that, look, I've been given money. We are now entering South Africa. I now already have money to shop. Even when I went to Botswana sometime, no money everywhere I go. And sometimes you see a queue. I remember in Botswana there was a queue. Not for people wanting prayer. They were queuing to give me money. I said, oh, men of God, be blessed. The next one, come. I put in my next. Come, hallelujah, next, they come. Because you must have fishing rights. Clap your hands for fishing rights. Fishing rights. <laughs> My wife ended up kneeling that when you go to Harare, especially when we went to Japan. Oh, Japanese are stingy. I was, I said, shop, yeah, I'll be blessed. I was blessed by a couple with a lot of money, almost about 6,000 US dollars, in a shop where we were shopping. And I brought it, and my wife shook her head. She knelt down and said, I want this grace. You know, when your wife now kneels down, then you know you are now a man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are now a true man of God. <laughs> to receive the grace. I want to pray for some people. Are you ready to receive fishing rights? Yeah. I want you to have fishing rights. That's why I, now when I'm speaking, I'm not bragging. Yeah. But that is my lifestyle. Yeah. I, I always tell people that our church is not in Zimbabwe. Though it's in Zimbabwe, we live in heaven. Yeah. It's heaven in Zimbabwe. So this is what I teach my children. So, the, so that's why Jesus said... When you read, I want you to see something, and let me, uh, my time, let me, but it's important. Can everyone open Matthew 27? I want you to see something that I just want to show you, and we, we, we pray for people. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 17, verse 27. Jesus said, check this. There was a debate about paying of taxes that... And Jesus said, now I want everyone to open, I want you to see on your own. And um, when they came, they said, they were talking about issues of taxes. So verse 25, it says, when Jesus said, come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From who do kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? 
Peter said to him from strangers. Now what God is saying is that strangers, it's uh, children in the church who behave like gods. Any person who behaves rebellious in a church is called a stranger. There are people who are called the sons of this house and some who are members. Members are not sons. Members are like strangers. When the pastor says, hallelujah, amen, them they say, amen, no. In Shona, it means we don't know what you are talking about. Because they are strangers. The way they behave, they behave in a strange manner. Now, Jesus said, do they collect from strangers or from sons? And Jesus said to him, then the, he said, Peter said, from strangers. Then the sons are free. Can we shout, the sons are free? Sons. Yeah, sons are not taxed in the spirit. Sons are free to prosper. So if you want to be free from taxation, from troubles, from being taxed by the devil and the kings of the earth, you must move from being a stranger to a son. Now Jesus then said, I want you to see verse 27. He said, nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea. Because if you are a son, you must have the anointing to go to the sea and cast a hook and take the fish that comes out first. And when you have opened its mouth, which is the fish get, you will find money. And you take that money, you give it and you pay. So sons have what the fish get releasing money to them. They have fishing rights. So Jesus said, sons are free. And after that, he said, I want to show you something. Go to the, to the sea. Because when you are a son, you have fishing rights. And when you open the, the fish gate, the fish that you get, take it, open its mouth. And it will release money because the fish gate is the gate that vomits money to people. So it's an anointing where you become a money magnet. A money starts to follow you without manners. Why? Because you are a son. Brethren, please, please, I am not bragging. I'm telling you the truth. I am a blessed man. Even Dr. Muligwe, there was a time I told him, I said, Dr. Muligwe, I have got five, more than 500 suits in my house. Shoes I can't count. These suits that I am wearing, it's suits that I think maybe will not disturb you when I'm preaching. <laughs> because there are some which I have. When I come and I wear it, they move like water. All of you, for 30 minutes, you will not listen. You will be just going, is this a suit or what? So even my wife says, don't wear those ones. Because they will not listen to anything. <laughs> I'm not lying. I, so, <laughs> even shoes that I have, some of them, they change color. You know, when you want it to match, you just move it. It becomes gray. And it becomes, you have never seen such shoes like that. And I wear them in Zimbabwe, where the economy is dead. I am alive and prospering. I don't repeat a suit on Sunday. I wear, remove. Wear. I am not a grasshopper. I am a son. I am not a grasshopper. Blessed by God. Because I support the men of God. I don't fight my father. I stand with him. So if you want to be blessed, stand with your men of God. When he says it's time to build, it's time to build. And we come and we give. Dr. Muligwe came and said, Chisa, I want to go with you to your house. Because you told me you have 500 suits. I have not seen a pastor with 500 suits. I, I said, Doc, I, now there are more than that. 
That was just a humble. I would, let's go in. He came, he saw everything. He said, huh? He was touching even my bed. He said, my son, <laughs> you live like Donald Trump. <laughs> hmm? And everywhere he's touching, he's touching. Oh my God. He's seeing everything. And then I took him to my walk in. He said, ha, this is a boutique. And I started this 50, yeah, 50, 100, this. Can you check, Doc? This 200. And this, yeah, this one's 300. Check, 400. Five. Last month, I had to release 360 suits for pastors. And when I release a suit, I would have worn it once. So you are like receiving something new. And there will be a perfume which will never leave you. It will follow you for the rest of your life. <laughs> because I am a blessed man. I have fishing rights. Hallelujah. I am not a jock. <laughs> if you want to be powerful. Hallelujah. So that's why I wrote these books. Mastering money. These are things. Some of you business people. You need even to get this book. Mastering money. And prophetic business principle, this one goes for 1,000 rands. I don't joke. This one, I can carry it back even if people don't take it. Because the stuff in it, it's, I wrote about serious fishing rights. How to fish in billions of dollars as a, as a Christian. So it's important as a child of God to be a son. Hallelujah. Amen. To be a son. I was showing Mr. Mushudu my house which I am building in Blawai, as a pastor, building a house with a helipad. And it's almost done. And a helicopter will be landing. Because I want a helicopter when I come here to Pretoria, no trouble. <laughs> and from Oara, on top of my house, I get into shower. I say, honey, I'm coming from Pretoria. And it lands on top of my house. I had to apply to city council. They came with engineers and it was designed. And the helipad was put on top of the house, which is like an L shape like this. And I was given a stand by the bush so that I don't trouble other people. It comes straight from the bush area, straight on top of my roof. And straight away, my children welcome me, not airport or whatever, straight from my, on my roof. So I have already the rights to do that. And for sure, another time when I come, I believe you are going to see that. Because I have fishing rights and I know it will happen. Can we clap our hands unto God? Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. Shout glory. So that's why I disagree with people. I say, I am a Zimbabwean. What, what, what? I am poor. No, 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 no. Because you are still living by citizenship of this earth. You must learn to live by the citizenship of heaven. So there are things which moved me from poverty to where I am today. And where we are now prospering. In a serious way. Was from Zimbabwe, I was telling people, I go for holiday 30 days, December. One to thirty with my family in business class, and I carry my maid with me. And I pay for her. All of you, some of you go to holidays. Do you for holidays? Do you go with your maid? If you want to go for holiday, come and be my maid. You will fly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for people. Just write an application letter. Come and wash my plates. You will see the world. Hallelujah. I'm not breaking. It's the truth they know, my sons. My maids have seen Japan. They've been everywhere. Malaysia, Singapore. Just for holiday. Why? It's a key that you must get. Amen. Supporting your father. Yeah. It can make you to live in another world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you still love me? Yes. Some of you, I see you are now angry. Now, especially when you look angry, I will go deeper. <laughs> I don't joke. When you look like you no longer like what I'm saying, I actually go deeper and deeper. And I, I will do a hit and run. I, I don't stay here. I will hit you, run back to, to Blawai. 
He will remain here resuscitating you and raising you up. Even if you die, we will kill you with the word of God. Hallelujah. We are going to kill that poverty. Shout yes! yes. You must prosper from today. Shout yes! yes. Business people here must touch billions. Shout yes! yes. Because we can't build this church which we are supposed to build when we don't have fishing rights. I release as a prophet. I prophesy fishing rights to this church. Somebody shout yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Shout, I will go fish in the sea, in the spiritual realm, and I will catch fish. Hallelujah. So we want to just pray for people right now because I'm checking my time here. Hallelujah. I now want to pray, but there is something, the last thing that I want to touch. The Bible says the first one to jump into the waters when they were steered was made well. So there is a blessing which I wrote in this book called the blessing of being first. Do you know that if you are the first one in this church to do something that has never been done by anybody, you get a blessing called the open check blessing. Where God heals whatever disease you had, whatever sickness, whether it was a financial sickness, whatever disease you had, it will be healed. So when the waters are stirred, and there is a project that is beginning in the church, let's say we now want to build a house or to build a church, be the first one to come and pledge. You get a blessing of being first. Do you know that the first person who, who arrived here at this church first before all of us got a blessing? The first person who comes on a Sunday in the morning before all others gets a blessing. And it is called the Echad, Echad in Hebrew. Because the Jewish people have one important verse which is Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, which they call the Shema Israel, the Shema, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He is number one. He is a heart. So God is on that position, and the devil wants that position. So whenever you press number one button, there is an anointing of a heart. That comes upon you. That's why Jesus said the first fish, open. It's called the first fruit, open. The first thing that you do in a church, which has never been done by anybody, whether it be to buy a drum set, which has never been seen in this church, whether maybe to fly your pastor for the first time to a holiday destination, if you are the first to do anything, you get a blessing. So I always also tap into the blessing. The blessing is the empowerment to prosper. A curse is an empowerment to fail. So I always check around what is not yet been done by anybody in our church. I make sure I'm the first one to do that. And there are some blessings that I get which are beyond comprehension. Some of the testimonies, if I say them, I, I, my wife said some of these things, these figures don't tell people. Because some of them, they will end up thinking you are exaggerating. But yet it's true. Those things are happening in our lives. God is blessing us. Why? Because we jump in first. So we have the anointing called the anointing of Kata Lambano. Shout Kata Lambano. Shake someone say you must have kata lambano. <laughs> In Greek, kata lambano. Kata, it means intelligence. Kata, ability to comprehend. When the waters are now moving. So when you have kata, you have spiritual intelligence to see when God is now troubling some certain waters in your church. And then la. Then la, la means to grab. You comprehend, you la, mbano. Mbano is time. 
in Greek. It means seasons. So you have kata. That is studying. Mm -mm. The Holy Spirit is now moving. The Bible says when the Spirit was moving in Genesis 1, God spoke. God does not speak when the Holy Spirit is not yet moving. When he's now moving, he speaks. Because when the Holy Spirit is now oscillating and in motion, he is now in what we call the active zone of the presence of God. So any word that you throw in the Spirit, he takes it as raw material and he uses it to make things. So God waited when the Holy Spirit was hovering upon the faces of, of the water. Genesis 1.3. And then God said, let there be light. Light was there. Let there be this. And so I speak. Once I see the anointing moving, I begin to speak things. I begin to declare. I begin to catabole things, to throw them in the spirit. So you must have catalambano. Is the, the Bible says they were waiting for the moving of the water in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is the house of God. Brethren, we come to church to wait for the moving of the waters. The reason why we are here is because we are waiting for the moving of the Holy Spirit. So when I see the Holy Spirit moving, I don't think twice. I jump, I go to the front to get prayer. So in our church, once they sense that there is a move, oh, Security stands. They, stand, they stand in front. The way they are standing here, they are used. The reason why they stand like this is because they know sometimes they are stampedes. Because we are pastoring more than 7,000 people per Sunday. So they can, the people can die. Because they want the move. Once the move is moving, they begin to jump, to run to the front. To get what they can get. So if you are the first you get a blessing. If you have catalambano, ability to think and observe and perceive spiritual moves and spiritual moments when waters are being troubled and you lie, you catch, mbano, the time, the season of God. Because God moves in seasons and he moves in cycles. So, so be the first, be the first. Like Jacob, he beat his brother. You must not have the spirit of Esau. Of coming late. Jacob had Catalambano. Whenever there was something that, no, I now want to bless you, my sons. He would be the first to be there. And you would get the blessing. I don't joke. When there is a moment to receive the blessing, I push my way. And I make sure I get it first. So, now, that's why, now listen, there is a battle between number one. Even in Africa, I don't know here, in Zimbabwe, the first born to break, who is the first one to break the matrix of the mother is taken for a ritual. We are now rebuking and uh, teaching people not to do that, which is called the masungiro. It has to do with tying uh, the word masungiro. So they say the first born must be born, the wife must go to the families, to the to her family side, and give birth from there. You don't give birth firstborn on your husband's side. So there are rituals that are done. Why? Because the devil doesn't want first second born. He also wants the firstborn. So that they are dedicated to him. So that's why I am going to pray for all firstborns that are in this church. I want to deliver you. Some of you, you were dedicated, not to God, but to certain things. Even if you were not dedicated, a firstborn must not live without being redeemed to Jesus. That's why when Jesus was born, he was taken to the church and they gave an offering. A first fruit must be, you must go to the church with a first fruit offering. My, all, all the firstborns who are here in this church, if you want to be, if I am to be uh, given time to talk to you, I will notice one thing which is obvious. Most of you, you are struggling in life. Second born, they don't struggle. Third born, they don't struggle. It's the first bonds that struggle. Because the devil wants them. It's a war between God and heaven. Be between God and the devil about the first born. 
So most the first born, your sister who is second born, she is prospering. You, you are struggling. Because you have not been redeemed. You have not yet been given to God. So I want you today to say, Lord, I want also to be given to the Lord. Do I have some first bonds in this place? Do I have some first bonds? If you are there, I know what you are passing through. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you, I know what you are passing through. I, I had my brother, the first born in our family, who was in prisons, fighting with people, doing heinous things, committing crimes. And we could not help our brother. He was from, he knows almost all prisons in Zimbabwe. I'm telling he was in newspapers, stabbing people, fighting and you, you, he was out of order in a serious way. So I asked God and the Lord said, redeem your brother. Get an offering. Go to your father, to your spiritual father, and dedicate your brother. And for sure, when I went, one day after doing that, he picked a book of Catherine Kuhlman. It had no enough pages. It had no, uh, the covers were off. So he went to read it whilst he was drunk. And he says, lightning came and struck him that day. And something was removed from his body. After I did that, uh, that uh, miraculous breakthrough seeding of the firstborn. Because even my firstborn son, I had to go with him after three days. In, in Jewish culture, they go before eight days to present every firstborn to God. Say, because they are the first one to break the matrix of the mother. And the Bible says, I want them, they are mine. So I went with, with my brother Sid, and one day, because he used to beat us. When I would come with church people, he would stone you. They were afraid of him. Even to come near our house when they were escorting me, they would leave me somewhere far before our house. Because he was violent, violent man. And when he, so we were having an all night prayer when he was delivered, just by that action. And he came where we were in Marondera. So when I started seeing a stampede, people running out. I said, what? I said, Oliver Jesus has come. Ah, he has come. He wants to beat us. So people were outside the tent afraid. And to our surprise, he came on the altar, knelt down, lifted his hands for the whole night until the next morning. And he explained his story. And today as I'm speaking, my brother is a pastor in our ministry. And God is now lifting him up. So I want to deliver all the firstborns. So if you are the first to step in, you were healed. Why? Because when you jump in first, you are triggering, you are punching the button of a card, the button that talks of God, who is number one. So once you touch that button, you move God. Because you would have declared God's position. That God, you are number one in my life. So I want you to check around what has never been done in this church. And I want you to be the first one to do it. I'm telling you, you will see something. Even, listen, if you have a problem that you are failing to move away from your life for a long time. I want you to locate one Sunday in a year where you are the first one to arrive here. Before anybody else has arrived. And kneel down even by the car park there. And say, Lord, I have touched your echad, your first fruit number. Bless me of whatever disease. I have people in my church who were healed, not because I laid hands on them. But they were just the first ones to arrive. Before everyone else. Just respecting God in that manner. And you are the first one to jump in when the waters are troubled. You are healed of whatever problem. It's remo- what, I, when God says whatever, it's whatever. And this verse is not in the Old Testament. It is still applies in the New Testament. It was in Jesus' time, what is called the grace time today. It works when you have principles of the word. I'm telling you, you will see things. The problem why we don't have breakthroughs is because we don't have keys of the spirit. 
So this is one of the most powerful keys, which is called the blessing of being first. Everyone shout the blessing of being first. Can we clap hands for being first? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, am, uh, I want to pray number two. Number two, uh, number three, I want to pray for all the people that, had, that have been in a condition for a very long time. Today, I want to pray for you. Something is going to happen in your life. You have got an area that you are praying for for a long time. Jesus is passing by. I said, Jesus is here. And he knows you are in that condition. So I want you to wait for your miracle. Can you shake someone and say, wait for your miracle? Shout, I'm going to wait for my miracle. Now, when, um, whenever you wait and you are patient, God will give you a big testimony. Amen. I said God will give you a big testimony. Amen. Because we, we lose things in the spirit. We miss breakthroughs because we are not even patient with our pastor. We are not even patient when the word is being taught. Some of us, we even look at time. But, uh, no. My movie is about to start. When is the preacher stopping? And we miss on the breakthroughs of God. We miss on the things of God because of such a spirit, because we are in a hurry, yet we have many problems. Some of you are in a hurry to go back home, to go back home where there are problems. And you want to rush there without a testimony. You want to rush there without a touch of God. So that's why the Bible says in Psalms, if you open Psalms 37, verse 7, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him and he will promote you and he will bless you. Now, what it means, listen, when you go on an ATM, And you punch, your, you put your card, your PIN number. It says, greetings, Mr. Chisa. And then money comes. And, uh, some figures there on the screen. You punch the money that you want. You press on the button that matches the money that you want. So when you are by the ATM there, it then puts as an inscription, which is written, please wait. Your transaction is what is being processed. But some people, after they put their money, that they put their card, punch the pin number, and say, I want 20,000 runs. When it writes, please wait, your transaction is being processed. What do they do? They start moving, greeting people. <laughs> Going to the next supermarket, and the machine is counting their money. And when it, these are Christians who are not patient, they start to move, they move from one church to another. They leave church when their husband is about to show up. <laughs> Do you know people who change church when God is now about to release their husband? Because they fail to wait. They don't have patience to wait for the blessings of God. So when God says, please wait, your transaction is being processed, wait. Can you shake someone next to say, wait, 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 wait. Say, don't be in a hurry. Shout, wait. Up to December, learn to wait. Even when things are going haywire, learn to wait. Even when your husband is beating you, learn to wait upon the Lord. And God will renew your strength. You don't go around greeting people and you leave your money and the machine is counting your money. When it releases it, some people will come and pick it. Someone will come and pick your husband when you are gone. <laughs> because he is going to show up. Your wife is going to show up. Your miracle is going to show up. Your testimony is going to show up. But what I am afraid, it might show up when you are no longer around. Let it show up when you are here. Amen. Be stuck to the things of God. Amen. Be patient in the house of God. Amen. Even as a sister, if you are now 42, and you are now looking at the mirror, and the devil is telling you, look, you are now growing wrinkles. 
try out there, try to bless yourself, you will get an Ishmael, a child that will trouble you. Learn to wait upon the Lord. So I have come with a message that even if you are a long time in that situation, 38 years, your transaction is being processed. Plus, I don't like money that comes out very fast. You know, when you go on an ATM and you press all your buttons, when you hear, and it comes, that's small money. <laughs> that's small money. <laughs> but if you want more money, you must be patient. It will be going. Then, if you have stayed long without a husband, and the machines of heaven are going. Hey, the husband coming. Ah! Oh my God. He's a gentleman that is loaded. There is something big God is processing. The longer you wait, the bigger the blessing. The shorter you wait, the smaller the blessing. So if you wait more, the transaction that God releases is very powerful. So you must learn to wait upon the Lord. Don't move around. Stay in the church. Don't backslide because God is doing something. Uh, can you shake somebody next to say your transaction is being processed? <laughs> shake them and say, please wait, please wait. Please. Hallelujah. Can we stand on our feet? I want you to shake somebody whilst you are standing. I'm done. Say, please wait, please wait. Please. Say, your transaction is being processed. <laughs> can we clap hands for transactions that are being processed? Some of you, you are going to receive your transaction today. Some are going to receive their transaction tomorrow evening. Some are going to receive their transactions on Sunday. So don't miss any service, even tomorrow. Even if we are to, in Zimbabwe, when I start deliverance, my spiritual father says, when it's prophet Jesus, now on the podium, he announces that my son, you know him, Jesus. He is an LP, a long player. <laughs> hey, you know those radios which were called the LP. So you must wait. So he tells people, make sure your cars, everything are ready. Because with the cheese, we go to 12. Sometimes people go back 1 a.m. Yes, I will be delivering them one by one. Why would you want to go, to go back home with your demons? <laughs> For what? And you just, every day you have been running to your house. I have my house, my house. Huh? And nothing is changing in your life from the time you have been running to your house. Nothing, your sofa is not changing. Your bed is giving you problem. You are always having back pain, but I don't understand why you want to run to such a bed. You need anointing that changes your bed, your house, everything, your life, your job, your money. But you must learn to wait. Don't be in a hurry like paparazzi. Papara, 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 running everywhere. No, sometimes you need to be in the presence of God. Like Moses would be 40 days talking to God. No movement on the mountain. Those transactions are big that are processed like that. So when a prophet stands, uh, no, 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 you must uh, forget about your watch. In fact, tomorrow I want everyone who comes here, if they have a watch, they must be a security man collecting watches. <laughs> we will give you after service. <laughs> because I want to deliver you. I don't want to go back to Zimbabwe empty. I want to go back to Zimbabwe empty. I don't want to go back with what I came with. Because I'm feeling I'm loaded for some people's breakthroughs. There are some people that must be delivered up to Sunday in this place. Your life must change. Your husband must come. And not a weak, quashiokad husband. We are talking of a gentleman. Not one that is walking. We want one that shows yeah, we are loaded. One that will bless you. Because we want a husband who will fly you in a private jet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A husband who will say, my wife, we are going for holiday. We are going to, to Indonesia. Yeah. And he gives you a card and 
say, swipe and shop until you drop. Not a husband who only miss you. Just to shop for 20,000 rands. Don't go beyond 20,000 rands. In Indonesia, what will 20,000 rands do? It's because you don't know how to wait. And that's why you are given these type of husbands. You want to rush. Hey, 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 hey. Out you are gone. Hallelujah. Learn to wait. Can we shout glory? Shout fire. Shout fire. Say Holy Ghost fire. Everybody shout Holy Ghost fire. Shout my transaction is being processed. Can you say Say my transaction is can you prophesy it do like this my transaction is being processed in the name of Jesus. Say I'm say, say to your brother, say I'm not moving here. I'm waiting for my money. Shout, I'm waiting for my blessing. I'm waiting for my deliverance. I'm waiting for power. Shout glory. So they were waiting. That, that guy never moved for years. Now, the Bible doesn't say he was 38 years old. The Bible says he was in that condition for 38 years. So, which means he was older than the time. He was in problems, but he didn't move. I want you to have patience, which attracts Jesus to visit you. To come by your way. Do you know there is a patience which makes God to visit you? Jesus said to change the direction that there is a man there who has been waiting for a long time. So I believe my coming to Pretoria, there is somebody that God brought me for here. Who has been waiting for a long time for a certain testimony. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? You are going to be touched. Let's lift our hands. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, receive I receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Say, thank you, Father, thank you, Father. For, your for your life, for your power, for your power. And, your glory, and your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, today, today I, receive I receive my deliverance, my deliverance. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Today, today I receive the glory of God, the power of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you shout a big amen? amen. Clap your hands unto Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for people. But I'm teaching this church something. Because I have noticed when you come uh, to South Africa or Botswana, they are quick to run out of church. Most people will be touching their times. But you are blessed with cars. Huh? Why did God give you a car? In Zimbabwe, people don't have cars. They use buses, but they wait for God. Yet you, you have your own car which you can drive. God protects you. Don't worry. When you are blessed, no robber can touch you. No armed robber can touch you. Because you are under the cloud of the blessing of God. Because you need your problems to be solved. And I'm here tomorrow. I am praying for people. Because it will be massive deliverance tomorrow. So tomorrow, please, please, allow me maybe to go up to 10 p.m. Come ready. Because I want to deliver almost each and every one. But it needs time. So that I'm not rushed because of the watch. Because if you want breakthroughs, it needs time. Hallelujah. I know all other days, because this is a conference which happens once a year. It happens what? Once a year. So you need to receive something in your life. And then when you receive it, you, you get blessed in your life. So I have noticed there are people who come to our church when I'm even busy. Someone will wait from 8 a.m. Say, no, can you tell them to go? Sometimes when it's now 3 p.m. when I'm going out, you still see that person out outside. Someone... 
And another pastor came and said, why do you wait for Prophet Shiza for such a long time? Go away, you just get help. And she said, no, I've gone to some places where you get quick help, but your problem doesn't go. Sometimes, <laughs> some places you wait long, but when you come back, your problem is gone. Because the ranks are different. And the anointings are different. We don't despise, but you must know which rank is standing in front of you. Prophets, uh, because I know there are some prophets who are doing funny things, but I'm not in that league. Amen. I preach Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I preach the word. Amen. I don't rush to do miracles if you have checked. Amen. I first ground you in the word biblical based prophetic church. That's what we are building in Zimbabwe. And when you are fed, then we pray for you. And we don't steal people's money, but we teach people how to make money Amen. by the word of God. Amen. And I am a husband of one wife, no girlfriends. Amen. I have never cheated my wife. Amen. I have one Miss World, one Miss Zimbabwe. Amen. That is my wife, my chocolate, my... I, I'm missing her. Hallelujah. So that is the only wife that I know. I stood in my church. I said, if there, there is no one who can claim that I, I, I once proposed love to them except this woman. And I can stand. That's why I can rebuke even my government prophetically and it's put in newspapers. And they honor even some intelligent guys. They came and said, Prophet Shiza, we have tested you. You are a man who stands in truth. And said, that's why you can rebuke even the president the way you do, because you can't do that when you are standing on the wrong ground. Who will just come and show you some videos and will tell you, buy beer for us there for the rally. <laughs> and if you say no, we will show you that. Do you want us to expose you? You will run. Do you know there are some prophets, pastors buying beer, beer, lorries of beer for politicians? Why? Because they have stories that they want to keep, but we are not like that. So whenever you see a false prophet, where is the genuine one? Because there can be no counterfeit U.S. dollar or 200 rands without the genuine one. There are genuine people that are there around. So when you see a counterfeit, they are genuine. Even tailors are taught, if you want to recognize a fake one, a fake rand, they give them time, they spend time with the genuine. So when a fake thing comes, they can pick it. So you must know that is, the Bible says many false prophets shall arise, but it doesn't say all prophets are false. So I want to pray for people here, because I know Apostle Humphrey, he knows me, and we want to pray for people. Yeah, but I'm trying to check my time here. Maybe let me do it tomorrow. Do you want me to pray for some people today? Yes. Are you sure? Can you shout a big yes? yes. All right. So we just want to, I, I want to pray. I'm sensing in my spirit. Maybe let me just pray for two categories. Two categories. Um, we want to pray for those who have a situation that has not been going for a long time. It's either a disease that you have. Maybe it's a kidney problem or a stomach problem. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have tithed, or whatever situation. I just want you to lift your hand wherever you are. Lift your hand if you are there. You are saying, I have a situation. Hallelujah. Quickly come to the front. Run to the front. Run to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Shout, Jesus. Jesus. Maybe let me finish uh, by 9 o'clock or so. If my watch is correct, it's saying about 10 to, is it 10 to 9 or so. Yesterday, we finished around half past nine. Let me try to be fast a little bit. But tomorrow, tomorrow, let's watch out tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, tomorrow I have a short message that I'm going to. Then I want to have in, uh, ample time to touch people, to deliver people. There are so many things which then Sunday also we will do the same. I will conclude there is a teaching that I want to teach on breaking limits. 
there are 15 limitations in human beings. So we, I will just cruise and just give you some of them, uh, which I can manage by Sunday, even though I don't finish all of them. And I will pray and break one by one so that this church can increase. You can't awake, awaken, arise, advance for an increase when you are limited. So tomorrow we are starting on breaking limits, the 14 limits in Christians. So we want to crush them. But now lift your hand, say, Lord Jesus, I have been in this condition for a long time. I now pray today that you touch me in the name of Jesus. That you free me in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I receive the fishing rights, the fish gate. My fish gate must be open. My ship gate must open. And my transactions are being processed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now lift both hands and say, I receive your miracle. This evening. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout, I receive your miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch me, O oh Lord. With your power. Touch me, O oh Lord. With your glory. In the name of Jesus. Let my situation disappear right now. In the name of Jesus. In the presence of God. Say, let it disappear. In the name of Jesus. There is a cloud. I'm sensing an anointing right now. God wants to melt problems. Hallelujah. He wants to melt problems. He wants to melt problems. Maraka shaka toboda. Malenda kadabakada. That situation is disappearing. As you leave this conference, after Sunday, even tonight, some of you, you are going to sleep like a baby. Hallelujah. Shout, I receive in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive. Can you clap your hands above your head? Above your head. Say, I'm receiving. Shout, I'm receiving, I'm receiving, I'm receiving, I'm receiving. Yes, continue saying, I'm receiving, I'm receiving. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am receiving, I'm receiving. Continue clapping your hands above your head. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, you are here. Lord, you are here. You are about to touch your people. Rapaka shaka bakata. Rondere mandala bakadawa. All right, now I want you to pray. I want you to begin to pray. I'm just, uh, I'm just coming right now to touch, to touch some people that are here. Hallelujah. Raka shaka tarabada. Now, when I touch you and I pray for you, I want you to kneel down. For five minutes, check your time. Five minutes. Just learn to be patient, to pray for that thing which was there for a long time. Those things, they don't just go in a rush like that. They go by patience. So I want you, after I just touch you, just one touch, I'm going to be doing very fast. Tomorrow, that's when I'll do proper deliverance. Here, it's just, because I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. So I'm just touching the contact point for God to deal with that situation. So just go and kneel down. I will move very fast. And then you go and you kneel down. The Lord said when I was at the hotel that I just want you to give them just a touch and you go. And they kneel down for five minutes because they were at a gate called Bethesda. The gate, the pool was called Bethesda. It had five colonnades which is number of grace, number five. So Jesus, the Holy Spirit said five minutes, which means grace, number five is the number of grace. Bethesda had five colonnades. The number of grace prophetically is represented by five. So just wait for five minutes. As you pray kneeling where you were seated. And thank God that that situation is melted before his presence. All mountains are being removed. 
in the name of Jesus. Praise and worship, you can sing for me. Hallelujah, you can sing as we are praying for people. Raka shaka bako takaragata. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Raka honda kabata. Father, we declare this place your holy ground. I thank you, O Lord, for your presence is here. In the name of Jesus, touch. Touch it. Receive your miracle. Touch. Receive your miracle. Touch. Receive your miracle. 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 Receive in the name of Jesus. Come out, you situation. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out, you situation. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out, you situation. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out, Morenda Kahota. Come out, Mandia Katata. Come out, Marienda Kata. Come out, Maranda Kata. Come out, Morenda Hala. Come out, Ruba Halebra. Come out, Mahonde Ketete. Come out, Lucy, in Jesus' name. Out, in the name of Jesus. Come out. Yes, come out, come out, come out. Loose them. Loose, in Jesus' name. Loose, loose, loose. Yes, come out. Come out. Come out. Go right now. Come out, in Jesus' name. Loose. Loose in the name of Jesus. Man, dun, 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 dun. Yes, go. Go right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Loose in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Come out right now. You situation. Loose, let it go. Loose right now. Loose. 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 Let me go to the second line. Mandia Kahusa Brahata Rabada. Loose in the name of Jesus. Loose right now. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose Rabakata. Loose. 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 Yes, Loose. Come out. Come out. Come out, you condition. Come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Come out right now. Go, 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 go. Out. Come out of it. Loose it. In the name of Jesus. Loose. Yes, go. Come out. Out. Out of your body. Come out, come out, come out. Loose it. Loose it, loose it, loose it. Let it be free from today. Let it be free from today. Let it be free from today. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I break your yoke. I break the yoke. I break the yoke. I break the yoke. I break the yoke. In the name of Jesus. We are breaking the yoke. Yes, yes, we break the yoke. We break it. Out. Loose. 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 You, you have no more place. You condition. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out. Yes. Go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. Fire. 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 Fire of the Lord bends you. Fire of the Lord bends you. Loose. 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 Yes. Go. Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Out. Out right now. In Jesus. I break. I break everything. In the name of Jesus. Loose. 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 In the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Go right now. Fire. Loose. 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 Fire. Fire. In the name of Jesus. Fire. In the name of Jesus. More and everybody. Out! Let's go, 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 go right now. Go right now. Go right now. Go right now. Fire! In the name of Jesus. Fire! Out! Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out. Loose it and let it go. Loose it. Loose it and let it go. Loose it. Loose it. Loose Loose Loose. Loose. Come out. Come out. Yes, fire. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come out right now. Mashakavada. Loose in Jesus' name. Out. Fire. 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 Come out. I break your powers. Loose. 
Loose in Jesus. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose him. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire. Robo dara bagada. Loose him. Loose him. Loose him. Loose him. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose. Loose, 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 loose. Mandara bakala bakasha. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your holy name. We thank you, the Father. Loose him, loose him now in Jesus. Loose, loose in Jesus. Yes, out, out. Fire, Jesus. Come out, come out, come out. Yes, out. Out! Come out, you condition that has been in there for a long life. Out in Jesus' name. Go! Go in Jesus' name. Robo Robo Dabada. Out right now. Fire! Fire! Fire, 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 fire. Loose it. Out in Jesus' name. Go! Loose them right now. Yes, continue, continue in prayer. Something is happening. Something is happening. More in the fire. Fire. Receive your miracle. Receive your testimony. Receive. 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 Receive your testimony. More in the baka toro boda. More in the baka da. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Receive. Loose and let it be free. Loose him and let him loose him, loose him, loose him right now. Mandara bakasha, ori endere bada. Loose this man, loose him, loose him and let him go. Loose him, loose him, loose him, loose, loose in the name of Jesus. Loose him in the name of Jesus. Ori eda da da da. Jesus. Hallelujah. Continue in prayer for your five minutes. The condition is going. The condition is disappearing. In the name of Jesus. It's disappearing. Yes, whatever, whatever condition, whatever condition is disappearing right now. Holy Spirit, yes, you touch your people. Touch your people. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let there be testimonies. Let there be testimonies. Let there be bread. I prophesy. Breakthroughs. I prophesy. Testimonies. I prophesy. Breakthroughs, I prophesy testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, for firstborns, I am going to pray for you today. Uh, if you are a firstborn, if you want that deliverance, you come holding a seed, a reasonable, meaningful seed. It's not for me. It will be put into the, I will pray for you. It will be seeded into the conference expenses in the name of Jesus. So you come tomorrow. I'm going to call all firstborns. Tomorrow I said it's deliverance of limitations. So we are going to be cutting them, breaking them. These first two days, I was just laying foundation of the deliverance process that we are going to do Saturday and Sunday. It will be more of praying for people because I want time uh, after we have really taught you some stuff. Uh, but there are people that I want to call here. Can you come, Donald? Um, Uh, 
I think there are people that surrendered their books. Uh, so usually, if that's what I do wherever I go. If you buy a book and you surrender it during my spare time in the hotel, because I'm a prophet, I don't struggle. I will just consult God concerning prophetic direction about your life. And I will release, uh, because usually in a book, you won't lose that prophecy. So I usually do that. So I, I want to call Pula Posa. If you are here, can you come? I have a word for you from the Lord. Pula Posa and Chivuri. Chivuri. Who else is here? Just come to the front. Colin Kaza. Is it Colin Kaza? Those people just come to the front. Colin Kaza. Next one. Uh, it's a uh, Tilelelui. Ram Rambau. Tilelelui. Ram Rambau something. Then there is Zwitani Rambau. And uh, Nyanisi Mabasa. Then this one is Muchetwa Muravo. All right. Can you come if you are around? I just want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Who is Pula Posa? Pula Posa. Okay. All right. This is the word of the Lord for you. Can you lift your hands? The Lord spoke to me when I was in the hotel praying that uh, read Nehemiah chapter 5, Lamentations chapter 5. The Lord says, I am now releasing for you uh, that your spiritual gift that devil has been hiding. The Lord said, tell her that she is now entering a season of promotions and testimonies and smiling. And uh, there is a restoration the Lord is bringing upon your life from 14 October. I want you to mark those dates up to 19 July next year. So there will be some restoration process some promotions and testimonies that will make you to smile. Receive in Jesus' name. Rakatakada. Lift it, lift it. Rima Hakasa. Oh Lord, let it touch the miracles that I saw you releasing upon your life. In Jesus' name. Receive right now. Receive. I break every demon, every power, every spirit that might want to contend and withstand this prophetic word. In Jesus' name, let them be free to rejoice and to smile. Receive now the breath of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's clap hands for her. God bless you. Father, I thank you. Then there is Chivuri. Wait, it's you. Is it correct? All right. All right. The Lord said, read Psalms 40 to 90 and also Luke chapter 5 and pray by faith from 27 August because I saw a generational curse being removed from your bloodline when I was praying for you. There is a generational curse and some of it it has to do even with some people drinking beer and so forth. The Lord said, uh, in sicknesses, I, he said, I have removed it, and even unmarriedness from their family. So I hear the Lord says, I'm bringing three things to you in juices. Number one, spiritual growth. Number two, there is a financial testimony coming, and the Lord said, tell you, I'm releasing a strong marriage blessing, even in a bloodline in your bloodline in the name of the area of strong marriages was not there lift your hands receive these things receive them in the name of jesus let her receive lift her. the anointing is here lord you are loading people sweet anointing touch you from today thank you holy spirit is broken everything is broken Everything is broken. The curse, the curse is broken. 
in Jesus mighty name thank you Holy Spirit then there is Colin Kaza where are you all right you you bought about two books even if you bought if you buy nine or what I will write in every book that's what I do but sometimes I'll be just praying doing nothing I am a prophet can you a prophet give me the other one I think this one he brought he bought two so there is the first one which the prophetic business principle for a thousand runs which you bought uh, the Lord said in this one what I wrote when I was praying for you because I was praying in Jesus mighty name hallelujah some of you put your phone numbers but I don't usually communicate with your phone numbers without your pastor's permission I don't do that so it's okay but I will just write here that's what I do so I see two significant breakthroughs that shall open business wise that's what the Lord said October 2023 to April 2024 so the Lord said read the Proverbs for wisdom Psalms and pray that period uh, so I hear wisdom 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 so you shall solve many people's problems says the Lord with the wisdom so I am releasing that wisdom then on your second book uh, that you bought I prayed it was continuing the Lord said tell Colin you have a gift Colin of encouraging and exhorting people which you don't know you are an encourager you are a good counselor and even a teacher you can teach the word so I see someone when I was praying for you I saw someone with a caterpillar a caterpillar a bulldozer removing many trees creating like a way for you so I heard the word uh, highway divine speed acceleration highway divine speed acceleration so I see you being blessed even with a level of a car you haven't driven before in due season also I saw chains falling from your legs and I heard the word freedom freedom lift your hands freedom and wisdom wisdom and freedom touch this man I rebuke everything oh God that was holding his life I pray for him I release your grace and the prophetic direction that you have given him let him take it by faith O oh Lord and follow the prophetic instructions as you said to Naaman go and dip yourself seven times in the river Jordan he wanted to resist but when he did it when he came out according to the word of the prophet he noticed his skin O oh Lord he had been healed like that of a baby the leprosy remained in the water I pray for your people to have the ability to follow prophetic instructions in Jesus' name. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? God bless you. Thank you. Can I speak to Muchetwa Muravo? Where are you? You are the one who bought this book. All right. The Lord was saying, tell her to pray early mornings before dawn from 7 October 2023 get the dates read Ephesians chapter 6 during that period the Lord has released I saw a big chair which you must sit on and the Lord was saying it's a promotion that I'm going to give you an elevation in juices so I saw the Lord said, I have answered a prayer, a breakthrough in the area. Uh, something she was recently praying for. There is something which you were praying for recently. God said, I have heard that prayer. I also saw uh, the Lord showed me a building. And he said, I shall give you this building. And a marital blessing. And I saw a white car that you shall drive in your time it's not very far like a Mercedes Benz but it was white so the Lord was saying those things that you are telling here pray because they are coming in due season yeah. hallelujah so when I'm prophesying 
as a prophet, I don't look at the shoes that you are wearing. <laughs> because a prophet, it must not be an obvious thing. You must even sometimes fail to believe it. Then that is the prophetic. There are some people, God tells me that this one with the shoes with the holes underneath, tell them they are going to be a millionaire. And for sure they, they will be millionaire. There is one boy who is now playing in the English Premier League called Marvelous Nakamba is my son. He came, he was nothing. He playing in the uh, some division. He was not in Premier League. I prayed and I said Zimbabwe, for Zimbabwe to know that there is a prophet. Lord, promote this one to go and play soccer in Europe. For sure, he had no uh, play. He's not a person who can play, you know, shamisiro or something that is uh, extraordinary. But God lifted him. He was failing to believe it. But now he played for Aston Villa. He is playing for Luton. It is qualified. It's coming back into the English Premier League. He's getting 60,000 pounds per week from a nobody. Hallelujah. So God is blessing you, sister. You are going to sit on that big chair. You are chosen by God. In Jesus' name, receive that blessing. Don't doubt and say, I am young. Yes, Lord, you are releasing it upon you. Can we clap hands unto Jesus? It will, you will testify. You will testify in Jesus' name. Father, I conclude with these last three. Who is that one? Rao. Is it Lao what? Rambao. The Lord is saying, someone was supposed to die in your family. Someone was supposed to die. It has been cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. I saw a grave being closed, an open grave being closed. An attack of death has been cancelled from your family in Jesus' name. I see the life of delays in your life moving in circles in your blood, the bloodline is broken from you and your family. I see now the Lord releasing a strong marriage breakthrough also in your family bloodline now and upon your children. So a, a, a case of losing sight. I saw some people like wearing, uh, wearing glasses in your family uh, as they are growing. Uh, the Lord said, it's a curse which I'm breaking from that family of eye problems. They have eye problems. It's being broken. So I see also uh, if, uh, from your family a disappointment that happened. It is being turned into an appointment. You faced a disappointment, but it's being turned into an appointment. So the Lord said, you shall testify a lot, especially 2024. It's your year, says the Lord. It's your year. A lot of testimonies. So pray a lot from January 2024. But that grave, I don't know that person, oh Lord, who was supposed to die, a family member. Someone sick somewhere. Lord, you are you have closed that grave in Jesus' name. The delays have been broken. In Jesus' name, Raka Shomonda, strong marriage has been released. I touch their side. In Jesus' name. They are now free from today to receive sight. Eyeglasses are being removed from this family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Already lift your hands also. Father, I pray for him. We rebuke the case of eye problems from this family. In Jesus' name, let them be free, O oh God, from glasses as they grow. I thank you, Holy God, that you are breaking it even from their children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh Lord. We worship your name. May we say a big amen. She's confirming 
uh, something to me so that what you are saying is very true so I'm going to pray for you and even your brother we are going to pray whatever the devil wants to do it has been cancelled in Jesus name can we celebrate it's a testimony you bring back a testimony thank you Lord all right well, last but not least uh, sweet Annie who is or oh, is you Baba all right you brought this one for 1,000 read Mark chapter 5 to 15 pray from the second week of September 2023 I see God giving you a triple level breakthrough in the next 24 months now listen number one the Lord said tell him that there is a business breakthrough open door testimony in 24 months you will see that it's a significant one number two a financial promotion and number three there is a property there is a property and even a new level of a car which you have never driven before it will be seen by the church what i'm saying in 24 months and the property is coming i don't know there is an issue of a property which i'm seeing and it needs to be concluded in the name of jesus there is an issue of a property father i pray for him i release that property in the spiritual realm as he follows the prophetic instruction let him O oh lord prosper in jesus name can we say amen <laughs> hallelujah the last one and i conclude uh, it's in Yanisi mabasa the lord said when i was praying for you that pray and fast every day eh, sorry every week of the first three weeks of september fasting every monday i don't know if you are getting it that when you get into september the first three weeks you fast monday 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 every monday those are three days for i see there are four things god is going to do in your life between period of september to january 2024 so the lord said a breakthrough number one in a career area educational area the career area so there is a breakthrough there that god i saw something that you are desiring or you are doing concerning your career so god wants to give you a breakthrough in that area then as i was praying i then saw a white paper being signed for you and god said it's a breakthrough so i tried to look but there is something a signature on a paper which you are looking for which you are praying for so god said it's going to be signed between september to january i see a signing of that white paper then a financial testimony upgrade is going to take place towards november december you are going to see it then also the lord showed me uh, but it was not very far from now a property coming it's coming in due season but this one is not in the months that i have indicated it is just a little bit after this process so this first three things you are fasting so the first one a breakthrough in career when you are fasting the first monday you pray for that one and the next one about a white paper you pray the next monday and about a financial testimony you pray the last monday then uh, you will see what god will do but the property is coming don't look down upon yourself god is releasing it in jesus name receive your breakthroughs receive educational breakthrough that i saw let your career be upgraded in jesus name oh lord we pray for to be upgraded oh god in the spiritual realm in the whatever she's pursuing in life or she desires to pursue let there be a testimony in jesus mighty name may we all shout a big amen, amen. let's celebrate the name of the lord celebrate the name of the lord everybody stand up and clap hands now we we want to celebrate now when when i was prophesying to people as i was praying for this lady when she moved there i noticed something on the floor they are i'm even seeing right now a lot of old rusted chains that were left by people here there are chains that have dropped 
shackles that are old, it's like generational cases. So many of them, when people were kneeling, praying, that were being removed from their feet and from their hands. Can we celebrate clap hands? I want you to jump and say hallelujah. Jump, 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 jump. Somebody jump. Somebody shout glory, 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 glory. Drama men, drama men. Raka shaka takata. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Jump for your... Yes. Shout, I am free. Do like this. Say, I am free. My legs, my hands, everything. Say, my testimony. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I want you to give about seven people a high five. Say, the chains have been removed. Say, I am now free. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Just to tell someone, the chains have been broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we just continue to just give the Lord the praise and honor? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm actually trying to find a way not to restrict him um, uh, as, as, as he releases the heart of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was trying to move the time for tomorrow, but uh, I think I still need to move it slightly earlier than... Yeah. Although I don't know what your earlier is. <laughs> No, just, just by one hour. Um, we are working on a, looking at a way of ensuring that uh, he, he comes back. Um, even if he ministers for the next two days, it will not be mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, so go pray about it, that the Lord may open time for him to come back again where it will be appropriately planned also in terms of sessions um, but we want to take this time as I don't know where the worshippers are because we have not given must bring your watches here. <laughs> I want us to just go and give as the last um, item. Perhaps for tomorrow, uh, let's start at four. Let's, let's start at four. Um, let's start at four and uh, not, not an African four. <laughs> Let's break the curse of an African time and start at the right time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, let's take our position for those that are receiving the offering. There's no need to... give another teaching on the offering when it's already been given. We trust that you have been delivered, yokes are broken, stinginess has been nullified. Hallelujah. You are giving an offering of honor before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our swiping machine tonight is working. The EFT, the snap scan. Uh, I understand the younger ones who understand technology well. You can also use your phone on the snap scan. Uh, just, you know, taking it closer to the bar there. Um, and um, as we sing here, go ahead quickly and let's give in Jesus' name. Oh, cover me, my Lord. Oh.
when we go to Israel next May, we are also going to go to the pool of Bethesda so that you may also have a picture of what it looks like. So we are going, hallelujah. So register your name if you want to go and pay the deposit. It is, it is basically be, you know, our numbers have already exceeded what we had thought we would have. So we might just have two trips if, if you really want to go next year. And you can have, you know, you can be in the next, next group. And God bless you. And also there are some pastors that I, I noticed that arrived after, you know, uh, they are new today. Uh, uh, if you can just uh, uh, wave that we may receive you and acknowledge and appreciate you, just wave wherever you are. Ah, Apostle Lamula, left you of your hand. <laughs> that we may appreciate you. Don't reject honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and God bless you and abundantly so. Father, we sanctify the gifts, the money that we have brought unto the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for blessings that have been released in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare as I plead the blood of Jesus, the covering of the blood of Jesus, divine protection as we leave this place, Lord. We declare it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every blessing that we received here tonight. We thank you for the testimonies that we have heard. For Father, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You are declaring you want to do it again and again and again upon the lives of every individual sitting here tonight. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and honor, mighty God. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.